start off with just a couple of slides okay. on here, just um, to go through what I'm going to cover this morning or today. Um, the first thing, um, look at the agenda, we're going to first look about multiple users working on a project at the same time, reporting across multiple projects, progress reporting, collaboration, schedule techniques, and then some questions and answers. So if you do have any questions, we can deal with those at the end. So this, this webinar here is based on around how several of, um, of our clients work. Um, and it's in two different ways that they work on using Power Project. They are both using the enterprise system, um, but they use it in two slightly different ways depending on their requirements, and we'll go through that. Well, first, one of the ones we're going to talk about is Saunders Construction, um, how they use it with multiple projects um, on one enterprise system. That, and then we're also going to talk about Mace and Mace Shard and how they use it as one um, mega project in an enterprise solution. So first of all, when we talk about uh, multi-user, it, it also can do collaboration. Enterprise allows multiple disciplines to connect for different reasons and obviously generate different views and reports out of the system, and I'll go through more of that in detail. Um, Aster Power Project looks and feels just like, the enterprise version looks and feels just like Aster Power Project. Uh, standalone. The only difference is you'll connect into an enterprise system. That can be on, that will be on a database, whether it be SQL or Oracle, and that enterprise server will be located um, within your um, office environment. The enterprise system has two main ways of working. One way is to have multiple projects um, that you have a shared resource or requirement across from all projects, um, or you have a requirement to have one mega project where you have multiple people requiring to access the system, and I'll demonstrate this in a little while. We also have, in addition to the enterprise, which is briefly talked about, business intelligence, web access, and timesheet. Business intelligence will work with the enterprise solution, but it will also work with the standalone. It allows you to collect and data mine the data from every project into a single SQL database, which you can then produce some web reports on. So I'll talk about that as we go through. We also have web access and timesheet. Um, we also, with the enterprise, it will work with the actual site progress mobile. So on Apple devices, Windows mobile, and um, Android devices, you, you can download a free app. If you then have a subscription to the site progress, you can upload your activities for the next two, four weeks, and people can walk around updating those, taking photos, and submitting them back to the system. So down here we can see we have a central database, we have clients, web access, and all those connecting to it. So the other reason is looking at why people are using that, and that's just reinforcing the two main issue reasons I, I highlighted is multiple projects. So you have multiple users who wanted to work on many projects. Um, you want a master program of all of those projects together. So enterprise will allow that, and it will allow that, uh, which I'll demonstrate a little, in a live environment. So we'll, we'll look at that. Or you have mega projects where you have one main project or uh, several numbers of projects that you then want to um, plan in a collaborative way and look across all of those, and we'll also look at that as we go through. So the advantages you have with enterprise is you have visibility across all projects, and as you can see here, this, um, this will allow you to see, I have my commercial and residential projects, and I even have a histogram usage across those. Um, we also have, as I said before, multiple clients and users accessing into the one system at the same time. Um, and we can have then a consistent reporting from the central repository, which will be, for example, business intelligence. So you, you end up with one version of a project. Um, you have user rights and access controls to that to say what people can and can't do. Your resources are from one set of resource pools, which you can then open up and look across all projects. 
Costing can be also allocated and can be monitored across different projects, which we'll also look at. And the areas to consider is that you have access rights um, within this, so you can control what people see, how much access they've got, and if they need to see everything at all. Um, the infrastructure size is a client-server application, so you have Aster Power Project installed on your machine, and then you have the Aster Power Project Enterprise Server centrally stored. It also means that you can have project templates and centrally controlled templates, um, program structures, resources, code libraries, costs, calendars, task pools, and so on, all within one system can shared across system, which means rather than creating views and reports and filters and resources for just one project, they can be shared across all projects. It also means that you can centralize and standardize the baselining and progressing processes with roles and responsibilities. <coughs> okay, so just to go to Power Project now, um, I have asked the Power Project open on screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a new project. Now, I, when I start creating a project, at the moment I'm just working standalone, but I could, if I wanted to, choose a template project, and over on here I can browse this project and I can actually browse either local files <coughs> or I can go to my server projects. Now this is my enterprise server running here and the yellow folder you see is a program within the enterprise server. That program and everything inside there is shared. So I have users, I have views, I have projects all within one, ser within one program. For this purpose here I'm actually creating a new um, server project, just literally from this point here, click on OK, choose my start date and my details, and very simply create a new project. Now it looks just like um, a normal standalone project is, as you would open, so the interface is very familiar to users, they don't have to worry about different interfaces to go to the enterprise server, but I am actually connected to the overall server at the moment. Now I'm logged in at the moment as admin, but I'll talk about that as we go through. And what I can do in here, I can actually very quickly, you know, if I created some some very quick tasks in here and create those, and all I'm going to do is just link those together, reschedule that project, just to give me a very simple project to look at. I can also then, if I wanted to, break that into phases. So here I can very quickly create my structure of my program, and this could be predefined as well if I wanted to, and I'll explain as we go through. So that's my main um, project, only a very simple one for this demonstration. And what I'm going to do is once I've done that, is I've highlighted it, and I'm going to move that into a project one. So now over on the left hand side, and if I just increase my font for all of you just to see that appear, over this structure over here, we've now got a project one structure. So I can go up and that is my project in its own right. And I can actually tell the system that, that is, is a project. So now you can see there's my project one. I can also very quickly create multiple projects with this structure, but I also have the ability to say that actually all of those are going to be, if I group those two possible projects, and these ones are actually my live projects, so very quickly I now have a, st a structure of my enterprise system over here in my enterprise project, a multi-project system with multiple um, sections and areas. Now what I can do is in here as well, if I chose to, I could say that was, um, if I just create a summary in there, and that is region 1, that could be region 2, that's region 3, Four. 
So very quickly, I've created a basic structure with projects in here. Obviously, these projects might start at different times, which is fine. They can start all over here. And if I save that, I now have my four projects in a basic structure that's already defined. I can see my groupings over here. Even zoom into this. I have the ability to take any project and make it into a template, which we call a task pool. So if I copy that to task pool, down in the task pool, there is my project. If I'm then, for any reason, I'm in region one of possible projects, I can say I need a new project, and I can just drop the new project wherever I want and name it as I require. So very quickly, I can actually just drop all those projects in and see those. And if I just do highlight that there, and save that. So that's the, me having the ability to set those up as I want, and I can just tag those as it is a project. So I'm almost from scratch here creating an enterprise structure for my projects that's not fixed. So if I want to change this in the future, I can. And I can go back to here and I can say, well, actually, I don't want those by regions. So I can take those out of the regions in there. And I can do the same thing in here. I can take those out of regions. And I could choose to group it in a different way if I wanted to. So I've got full control over here as I'm the administrator of the system. I can save that. And then when I go to open in there, you'll see my new server project is there. If I actually double click on it, it lists the individual projects and I can open those individually, which I'll show you in a moment. So I can just close this down the line, the main one. And when I go open, go into there and choose to look at project three. And now I'm only in project three. I don't need to see any of the other projects. They are there and any changes I make on here, I am affecting the overall enterprise. But as an individual project manager or a planner or a scheduler, I can work on individual projects. I still have access to all my codes and my resources, which I'll talk about in a moment. I can also, if I just close that down again, I don't need to change anything there. And if I open up my server project there, and if I open up another screen at the moment, just close the ones down there. And I'm going to actually open up with the other version, also the same new project server. So very quickly, I've created it, and I've now got two users accessing the system. So if I just hide that away so you can see that down there. And this one down here, I'm going to go into project three. And I'm going to go into there and I can see my project up here I'm also going to go into project 3 so I'm looking at the same project at the same time notice when I select activities in this screen here is this user they get highlighted in blue which means they're locked to me and down this screen when I do that they go purple shading to show they're locked to other people so very quickly I can see that but one of the real powers we've got within Power Project Enterprise is that we can not only make changes across the same project at the same time, that information is live. So as I make a change to this project and let go, you see it instantly appear on everybody else's screen. I could be logged into just an individual project down here, have everything open up on this screen, it would still work in just the same way. So I can make those changes, I can then choose to reschedule across and I see the update and move those around. Once I save this, it releases that, and then this user, if he has access rights, can start making changes to that as well. So very quick, you have a live interactive system. Now taken on top of that, if I just save that for a moment in here, and then on this one, I can actually reschedule it, as I have full access to both of those. Taken on top of that, though, we also have the ability to use code libraries and against our project. Now, code libraries is the functionality of having a list of colored items that you can assign and tag to different tasks within a project. So, for example, I can say risk factor, and I could mark this task here 
as a high risk task. That's in project three. If I go to project four, phase two, I could mark this one as a high risk task. I could go to project five and I could go into here and I could mark that as a high risk task. Project six, phase one, and as you notice here, because I've got access to all of them, I can highlight those very quickly. Now, that's a, the advantage of that is if I was in just Project 6 and looking at all the details, I can see that in there. If I printed that out, that would have a code library on there. But what I also have the ability to do is to run filters. And again, this is just a predefined one in the system using the template when I created. But I can actually say in here that I want everything that is high risk. I click on finish and it shows me everything that is high risk. But if I wanted to, I could look across the whole system. So I can see across now all projects. And if I wanted to, I could just quite simply display the name of the project in there. Like so. So I can see the project and I can see the activity in there very quickly. So you can see those in there. If I was to maximize that to one screen just to see that, I'm now looking at key um, high risk tasks across multiple projects. So the advantage now I can make changes to these if I wanted to, those will be affecting the overall program and what other people are seeing. So for an example in say Saunders case, they can have multiple projects on the enterprise here. They can work on them individually, they can work on them collectively, and they can work across all of them inside here. So I can go back to this stage, turn my filter off, and there's my list of my projects. I can just remove that column in there. I also have the ability that when I'm looking down my structure here, I can choose phase one. So I can look at just phase one, but I could also look at phase one from other projects at the same time. So I can very quickly see the contents of those. And again, if I wanted to, I can simply add and show um, a project column in there so I can see what project they're from. And then the advantage here is I can actually draw links from one project to another tasks in here, which look locally at the moment because I'm seeing them on the same screen. I do this across here. And then when I go back to my program, you can see I've got cross project linking in here and I can then start to choose to reschedule my project and it starts to take into account those linkings. I can also do a very high level if I wanted to linking, but usually you have the ability to link for each project from task to task. So I start to have that view there of my multiple projects. So very quickly you can see that and at any stage now I've done that, I could go back and look at my key tasks. Part of the other features you've got in here is that as well as assigning code libraries, we also have resources that we can assign and these are shared across the whole program. The enterprise program we've got set up is that yellow folder. We have consumable resources, cost centers as well. Now I can, if I wanted to go into a project and very simply allocate um, my resources to those tasks, or if I wanted to, I could have a view predefined. So inside here, I go into my resources and go to my um, resource entry view inside here. And then inside left hand side, I can say it's live projects. I want to look at phase one. Well, let's look at all of those and I can open those up. And now inside here, just to zoom in a bit so you can see this, I can say how many brick layers. So I can say I need two brick layers on that. I need three people on that two of those, two of the, three of those, I need one roofer, two there, four of those, four of those. And as you can see, as I'm assigning resources just by typing into a column in here, it is, it is generating a resource histogram for my resources and my usage. So I can see I have my availability here in the blue line and I can see the blue shading is how many brick layers I need. This is for carpenters and this is a combined histogram of my overall resource usage. 
So this is now looking across this. I can also see at the bottom here in my resource usage view, it's telling me how much time each of these people are allocated to each of the tasks. So I can see bricklayers in there. The blue means it's under um, allocated, so there is more availability. Um, the red, the, the black is just normal and if it's red it means they're over allocated in here so it indicates what my allocation is and there's a whole range of formatting options you've got with this side um, of the resource usage view but the key part as well is that although I've assigned 80 hours I can actually say in that week they're only doing 50 so I can under assign or over assign or change it for a particular week which affects on that particular task and affects the resource usage now I'm changing my resources here and I'm looking at my resources just on the basis at the moment I'm looking at phase three. If I just um, very quickly just get to remove these in here. So I just see the one histogram at the bottom. I can very quickly turn this result, this histogram to look at branch. So now when I click on my different projects. Oops. That's a branch. So that's a branch. So now when I click on my projects, when I click at phase three, this is my resources for phase three. If I go into phase um, four or project four, there is no uh, further items there. If I assign brick layers to that, uh, do that. Um, and then I can switch between those to see the different resource usage. If I go to live projects, I can see the combined resource requirements across those all those projects. So very quickly, I'm now starting to see how my resource requirements are um, needed. So this is where I'm looking at multiple projects with multiple resources allocated across those. I also have the ability then within my histogram to right click and say show tasks in this day. And this then shows me those tasks that they're working on for a, that particular day across all the projects and it opens up a new view for me to see that so I can close that down and again as it's live if I'm making changes to my whole projects and I'm moving you can see the impact at the bottom of the screen and how that's being affected so as my projects move around you will see that if I go to show all of my projects you can see where they are and the relationship between all of them and if a project gets slotted in which is often what you want to do see where it will fit in with my resources you can move it around and you can see that actually if we slot it in there we've got capacity to do that if we move it across we don't have capacity for that so that's a very quick overview of you know the enterprise side but also showing you that here that we can multiple people can work on the system at the same time we've also can see um, reporting across multiple projects so we do have for example here if I close down this just save that close that down if I open up my um, example one which was set up previous to this this has that as you may have seen some of those screenshots we saw this has an overall number of projects already set up it has a number of code libraries already configured inside here and it has a number of views so inside here we can go into from project management we can see the projects we can go to a progress view inside here and if I just for a moment look at this I can see across one particular project I can start to enter progress against that I have the ability to enter actual starts and actual finish dates I have a plan percentage of progress coming from my baseline and to talk about your baseline in there that you can actually see where you are set and we'll talk about that in a moment in the baseline side and we can enter a percent complete of where we currently are so as I can fill those through we've got 50% there and if I wanted to I can fit in 100% in there and it completes off the work I can choose which week I'm reporting progress up to and there and if I just go to turn that again like that and as I move my weekly progress along it can 
automatically um, move across um, the progress periods and we'll look at that as we go through more. So there's my progress there, so it's week two, week three and four and so forth. It can move across. So coming back to the main screen, I also have my views and I can have, if I wanted to, from a senior management view, I can look at my portfolio of projects and this is one you may have seen, but here we have it listing each project by its groupings. It doesn't have to list it by that. We've got by project sponsors there. Down at the bottom here, we've got my resource team allocated across. This resource team actually has a number of departments inside it. And one of the advantages here, this is now looking across the whole system. And I can quite simply right click and say drill down. And I can now look at the capacity of every team across all my projects. Again, if this is one single mega project, it will be looking at across the whole area. But even as a mega project, I would then define each main phase of the project as an individual section, which I could be monitoring individually, but as a whole as well. I also have the ability to, if I go into my cost view here, I can assign to my, uh, my view, and if I just turn my resource off for a moment, I can assign costings um, to my project. So in here you can see I've got a project, I can put initial costings in, and as I type a costing in, it will automatically apply it to my costing graphs at the bottom. And again, these costing graphs can look across the whole project, or they can look across the whole system, or just at one particular project or phase. I also have the ability, with when I have it all together, that I can see I can put an income in against my projects and I can see my net return on those projects. I'm looking at a project in its phases, but if I go a higher level to the section, I can see my material cost is 64,000, contract cost is 125,000, and I can see um, income in there and I can then see a difference between those. I can also, I'm looking at all of those projects there. If I just very quickly click on that, I've selected all of my main sections. So now I have a list of every project and every cost. But I can go even higher level than that. And I can say, look, all my commercial projects, this is what they're costing. This is what I'm getting from them. I can also look at um, those sections there and I can highlight and see there and if I really wanted to go a higher level than that I can see my agreed project prospect and non-project work all of those and rolling up the values so very quickly I can roll up those values now one of the advantages here is if I go back to this level here for a moment and just show very quickly and this is one of the advantages of working with it and you know where companies will use if they have costings allocated to their project, I can add in a cost column very quickly and I can choose to say that cost column, I want to see what the cost is for a particular, let's say cost for Jan uh, 2015 and in there I can then set my dates to 1st of January 2015 and my completion, my finish date on that column now to the end of January the 31st. And if I close on that, that will now show me a cost just for January 2015. And again, that cost column rolls up and down so I can look in detail. I can higher level, higher level, and higher level. So I can go across all of those to view how they're performing and the cost for each of those ones. And I can do the same thing for income as well. So, so far really what we have looked at from the agenda is we've looked at working across multiple projects, um, reporting across multiple projects, um, collaboration, um, and also some of the techniques you know, that we can link between projects and so forth. But it's also looking at um, some of the reporting options and some of the other features we've got in here. Once you have a system with multiple projects in it and you have multiple resources or a mega project with multiple resources, 
you may have the issue where you have a single task that you want someone to work on um, and we give you a feature that you can choose to um, do what we call a resource search it's based on a number of criteria so in here I can have my teams but I could have further criteria assigned to them and I can say I need a maintenance person to work this task and if I reduce this down I'm looking for someone to work that particular task I know I want the type this type of person click on search it will find all the relative people that match my criteria if they were multi-skilled I might choose multi one ones and it would show my match to that and then I, the power here is I can check the availability so I have the availability and see that all the top four are available and I can say Graham is going to assign to that task and I've just assigned Graham Graham has a cost rate so that has now just created a cost and income um, on my projects so literally I can select that and if I wanted to see the resources I can turn them on and I can see grams allocated there and we have a total cost of 2000 and an income of 20,000 and that just becomes part of the project so in there so so far we've seen all of that now this information here can obviously be printed out in Gantt chart format it can be printed out in normal formats um, but you obviously when you're printing Gantt charts if I went to my senior management view again I can see that I have my project here and I could obviously print that out as I required it at the bottom I don't have to have the histogram at the bottom I could just have these so I could look at those and go from there we also have the ability to if I just go back to this if I just go back to my normal view if I just do a file save as and just to show you how this works go to my desktop create a new folder called HTML go into the HTML and say this is going to be my program and I'm going to save that as a HTML file I'm going to do the whole system include graphics as JPEGs click on OK and that's going to wear away now going through my enterprise system exporting the data into a format on my desktop now if I go to my desktop in there I've got my HTML I have my program in there and if I open that up here is my export now this is live this is not live this is at the point I exported it but you do not need power project you do not need any application to view this this can be stored on a central server and I can look in my project and say oh there's my agreed projects I want to go to my commercial I can see those how they are I want to look at my alpha project and there it is it's a read-only version but it is the live project with the predefined columns I had set up I can see the resources I can see the links I can see the whole thing as a single <coughs> Gantt chart as I'm looking in a web browser but that means you can give you access to multiple users and you can schedule in your design your export time for that so let me just close that close that so very quickly now as I know we're approaching the end of our session today um, just to talk briefly about if I go into a particular project let me turn the resources off just to make it easy to see part of the process here as well is that I can create baselines for the enterprise system and I'm going to choose to baseline one okay very simple baseline to start off with and that baseline if I look at my project is underneath and you can see the yellow if I make changes to my project in there just highlight that just flag that for a moment and reschedule you can see the differences between that project <coughs> very quickly and then if I then go at a later stage you can see I've only got one project baseline I can then go into other projects and I can then add them to the baseline as of when and required so you can have a baseline policy so I can merge that in so that one gets added and when I step up a level I can see that is added to 
the baseline, but the other projects haven't yet been because they may not have been agreed and signed off by the client. So I can have a copy of every every project as it was agreed in the overall global baseline that can be used within the enterprise system. And obviously, if coming back here, if I simply had things like um, my progress columns inside here, and I'll just use percent complete for a moment, that's where I'm currently am in my agreed projects. If I go into there, I can see it's in my commercial, and I can see it's actually in Project Bravo, and there I can see progress on it, and there I can see the progress is on there, and I can enter progress as I go through. So each user would be able to enter progress as they go through. And finally, a few other things just to be aware of. As you may have noticed, I've been opening up in here these different tabs. Um, these are the different projects. What I, or, or not all my views of the projects, what I can do is I can actually create a new one of these just by right clicking and saying new. And I can choose to drag that down to have a multi-project view. This project could be the project Charlie up here. This project down here could be um, project D. So two different projects and within the system. One of the, because they're all in the one enterprise system, I can draw links across windows to other projects. So I can see those however I want. And I can also assign resources from this window up here if I wanted to to this window down here as they are the same global resources. So little tips are there of how you can link up multi-projects together and how you can work together in there. So I know I'm aware of the time now that leads us to 10, to, uh, that's about 50 minutes or so. If we have any questions, I don't know if we can see if anyone has any questions for us. Hello, Chris. Uh, Hi there. Hello. Uh, for now, there is no questions, but uh, okay. you know, if you have any questions, please type to chat and we will answer them. I think everything is clear and uh, they don't have any questions, Chris, now. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. <clears throat> Just a second. Okay. Okay, Chris, thank you very much. And we appreciate thank you very much. your support. Thank you for the webinar. No, thank you very much. So if there are any further questions people have, let us know and we can answer those. Okay, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat>